Bismillah. Is the mic okay? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin. Sayyidina wa habibina wa shafi'ina wa nuri qulubina wa qurdi aynina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa salim. Nawala ta'alluma wa ta'alim wa tadhakura wa tadhkir wa naf'a wa nidifa' wa rifada wa lisifada wa lhasa ala tamasuki bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa salam wa dua ilal huda wa dalala al khair ibtigha wajhillah wa murdatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'a lutfin wa afiyatin birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma inna nasadaka al-alma ladunni wa mashraba al-safi al-hani ya wahab ya ghani Allahumma nasadaka al-alma ladunni wa mashraba al-safi al-hani ya wahab ya ghani Allahumma inna nasadaka al-alma ladunni wa mashraba al-safi al-hani ya wahab ya ghani wa sallallahu ala sidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbi al-alamin amin I thought, I, had, I thought I had the book saved on my desktop, but it's not there. Let me get my book. Let me get the book first. I couldn't find it in, uh, earlier. I was. I think I. I thought I saved it on my desktop, but it was. It wasn't there. Alhamdulillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are on our first chapter, right? So we have finished. Um, we went through in revision actually because it was done. It was done earlier on on the biography of Imam Al Haddad, and it went through the preface. Um, that was that was there, and now we're going into the beginning. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It's a clearer uh, document, yeah, but, I rec but I recommend that uh, everyone to buy to, to purchase the book. <laughs> if you can't purchase the book, purchase the book. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The beginning of the path. Last week we actually re read up till uh, the second page, but I'm just going to read from the, from the beginning again without um, explaining the first part uh, because we have done so last week. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Chapter one: The beginning of the path. A powerful urge of divine origin. A seeker should strengthen. Protect and respond to it. Allahumma salli ala sallina Muhammad. Is the mic okay? Is it, I'm using a different mic. That's why. 
like is there like a fan that can be hurt? Someone is asking me if I'm near a fan. Is there a fan that can be hurt? It's okay, right? Is it okay? It's echoey. It's echoey. That means it's the new mic lah. <laughs> it's the, the new mic is the new mic is um but I'm not near any fan. It's a ceiling fan. Which is not noisy. <laughs> Okay, means the, means the, the, the mic is catching the the, the sitting fan, is it? Ya Allah, I mean, I, I will just see lah how this mic is, otherwise I will change back to my own mic. Okay, know that the path begins, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Know that the path begins with Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws or casts into the heart of the slave a powerful urge which troubles and unnerves him and drives him towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last abode. It turns him away from life on earth and being. Like others busily engaged uh, in gathering and building, tasting and enjoying the pleasures of the world and deceived and, and, and deceived by its ornaments. This urge is one of the hidden acts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a breath of guidance. Alhamdulillah that Allah, that, uh, Allah sends his, to his servants this breath of guidance. This is this, this breeze, eh? breath or breeze of guidance. And the sign of the beginning, uh, uh, and the sign of the beginning, uh, Allah's trust in his slave. Often the slave has bestowed with the signs as he listens to those people who stir in him the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is why to, to continue and to have classes to always attend classes um, it is important right? it is important it is only when people uh, stop attending classes which is why our scholars will say that if you don't go for reminders and for classes every one, at least once every three days and even that is minimal it should be every single day <laughs> every single day you need to go for classes to remind you of the hereafter every single day it is only when a person actually stops doing so they stop coming for classes that is when they become easy prey to shaitan you can't just read through without, without shara you have to shara <laughs> some parts of this but yes you have to mention we have to mention it because mashallah in this past week i met a few people you know, mashallah who would um i mean who, who, would, who basically you know um came up they just speak they spoke to me about people in their lives their family their relatives their, their, their loved one their friends right who have straight from the path they have gone they've gone the other way they have left um the religion or they have left practices or they have left you know what they were what they used to be on right and every single person uh the problem is them being too busy in the world see enjoying gathering building tasting and enjoying the pleasures of this world right they were they were so busy with the world that they stopped what they used to go for when it, with regards to classes and so this this statement of our scholars that if someone goes through three days indeed they say three days right three days without having any reminder of why you're on this earth and and any reminder of, pre- of preparation for death and for the hereafter if you go through three days with no reminders at all <laughs> right so you think about it how how could it be that someone goes through three days without any reminder right? because your entire purpose of of your existence right this is your entire why you're here in the first place now but if someone goes through for goes through three days without any reminder the scholars say that that will lead that that will lead to the death of the heart and the death of the heart then the heart no longer um, uh, uh, no longer feels guidance or wants guidance or seeks guidance because the heart has died, and they said three days, <laughs> Subhanallah. You know, which meaning that if you if you go through one day without a remind without reminders of the hereafter, then your heart is on its on its uh, it's, it's moving towards its death. You go through two days right, without any reminders, the heart is really in a critical in a, in a critical state. You know, in ICU right, in a critical state. You go to come to the third day with no reminder, death. Right, on the heart, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is able to revive dry bones and Allah can revive the dead heart. But subhanAllah, to, to take this seriously, right, to never allow this to happen right, to yourself and to your family, to your children, to your, to your relatives, to those who are around you, remind them there has to be, a, there has, you have to have reminders every single day. And right now in our, in our time, there is no excuse why we're not getting reminders every single day when it's, little, it's literally on, at our fingertips, it's, it's in our hands. Like if you can open up your social media every single day, like you can open up a lecture, you know, a beneficial lecture every single day. You can open up the Quran every 
single day, right? Uh, and and gain reminders and 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 warnings from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala right, about where we are headed, where, where are we headed in our lives, and mashallah. Right, so, mashallah, you know, so so there are people that who know, mashallah, they've gone through uh, day after day without any reminder of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Then Allah, by His mercy, places in their heart this aching, this this pain, you know, this um, you know, this 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 urge. Right, there's this breath from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you see here, you know, it troubles and unnerves them. It drives them to to, 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 to want to seek and to want to go right, for these classes. And this is why Imam Al Haddad from the very beginning of this book says, When this happens to you, grab onto it, hold it, and go with it. Do not walk away, right? So you should strengthen, protect, and respond to it. Even in his in his title, right? Strengthen, protect, and respond to it. Do not do not go through your day or go to, go through your life when you feel all these urges coming to you. Don't ignore it, but go with it. And this happens when you listen to people, and this happens when you're in classes, right? I mean, how else do you listen? How else do you get all these reminders and and this, this stirring up of of fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala if you're not going to be exposed to them, you know, Subhanallah. And this is this is the tragedy of it all. That you know, sometimes in, in, in our, this, this past week, I, so many people, mashallah, right, uh, came up and and, and just you know like lamented, you know, they, they spoke about people, you know, in their lives or that, um, you know, generally, like generally in their lives, right, of so and so and so and so and so and so, they don't know how to get to them, they don't know how to uh, to to influence them or how to pull, pull pull them back, how to bring them back, and every time you say to them, you know, come for classes or at least listen to this lecture or at least you know um you know listen to this and to that, you give them all these things, but they don't they don't want to. They don't want to. Right? They have blocked. Right? They have blocked any reminder because the reminder of the hereafter is uh, it is uncomfortable and it is um, you know inconvenient. The reminder of the hereafter because it will jolt you into reality and you can you have to stop your 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 playing around right? your your um, your your fully foolishness or your entertainment or whatever. You have to you get jolted and you and you realize that. It could be your very last day, your very last month, your very last year on this on this earth, and what are you going to do about it? No, subhanallah. So it is. It is no matter what, we cannot run away. Right? It is not. <laughs> it, is, it is foolish to try and run away from the ultimate reality of us meeting Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we must, we must, we must every single day surround ourselves with people, whether it's electronically or physically. Who remind us and stir in us the fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the desire and learning, uh, and yearning of one, the desire and, and yearning for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. At other times, when he looks at the people of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and be reminded of the people of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know, whenever you are just you're just tired and you, and you want to you want to scroll scroll scroll, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's it's a habit of our of our zaman of, of our people. You know, our time. When people just when they're tired, they open their phones and they scroll scroll scroll. I would say you go you go to Google, you just search. You know the name of a of a scholar, any scholar that you like, you know, um, and you just and then all of the the the, the faces of that scholar comes up. Or search uh, Medina, or search Makkah, or search so many places you could search. You know, Subhanallah, I search you know uh, Medina. Like I like to I like to do it. You know my, myself whenever I'm, you know, um, you know, like, like, like I just wanna wanna read something. I just wanna see things. So you just go onto your phone and you search Medina, right? and then, or there's a live video of Medina on YouTube, right? You can go there and you just see Medina live, and then you just watch the people in Medina, lah. <laughs> no, inshallah. And then you imagine that they're there in 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 the Rauda, and you're there with the people there and whatever. No, inshallah. I will, for me, I will search Habib Omar and I will see all Habib's faces. <laughs> inshallah, all these pictures, and then or uh, I have my, my sister-in-law. She loves um to search uh Shia Omar Farouk, right? Because he's he's he, she said he's so. He's so illuminated. <laughs> She's so like amazed by how how much light there is in the face of Sheikh Omar uh, Farooq. Uh, mashallah. <laughs> so, so I mean, mashallah. So things that we can do to look at the at the people of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? Or the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the Kaaba, um, or the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You can just like you know get go and search you know um what because now we're all stuck in our countries so in Singapore especially we have, like you know limited. We can go to a lot of places actually, not not so limited, right? But um, you can search that uh, search na- natural landscapes, you know, and then see Allah Subhanahu's creation, Subhanahu wa Taala, the exalted, all with the intention to get close to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It is better than doing mindless uh, scrolling, and which which I really Allah uh, Allahu alam that I, that it has gone. I think our social media, because of the amount of advertising that's going on in there, is really 
I think it's terrible. And I really hope everyone here, as you go through this book and you're serious in taking this path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are learning a book that is called Risala Adab Suluk al Murid. It is, it is the, the, the treatise on the etiquette of the path, uh, uh, on the discipline, uh, in the path of the seeker of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeker to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you should, you know, if you're looking at, 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 at your social media, if you're using it for anything more, than just to post like that one material right, for people um, and if, you know to read that if you're scrolling 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 then it's a lot it's a lot of that's a lot of um, even if you don't follow them there's a lot of uh, all this advertising you know and pop-ups and I don't know what how these things work right, but but did they come in your way and you don't want to see it but it keep coming in your way right so you know what stop so I stop just stop doing it because you know and it's better that you can search something that you actually want to see. So you search Medina, you search Mecca, you search the Kaaba, you search the scholars, you search. So you, you're not you're not gonna see things you don't want to see. <laughs> and subhanallah. And in your sincerity to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, I want to get close to Him. Right? Uh, for myself personally, I find a lot of um, rest uh, in just searching Medina. <laughs> just just search Medina and just just there at the at the Green Dome. <laughs> the, the Medina life is very nice, they, and then they have all the hadiths being read. In the background, so mashallah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. At other times, you look at the people of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the exalted, and through them sees the signs. Sometimes for no reason or without any means at all. Right? This, this is the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So sometimes in the class you feel the urges. Sometimes you know when you look at the people of Allah, you feel like you want to be like them or you want to be with them. You know, at least be with them. I, and sometimes when you see, you know, Allah's signs, Allah's verses, Allah's creation, and sometimes for no reason at all, <laughs> that nothing, there was no trigger, but it's just that, you know, it just, it just was, was just cast into the heart of a person, and they, you know, um, and, and 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 straight away they just, they just felt that they had to change their life, and then uh, over, and they they left whatever they were they were on, and they went and and and, and sought the path to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that is really Subhanallah. It's all of these things are all from the mercy and the generosity and and the, and the boundary of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that He guides His servants Subhanahu Wa Taala. A person is encouraged and should actively pursue. Uh, to obtain such a state, such a such such a, such a hal, and mashallah, you know, um, you know, if you all read says a uh, Halima Halima Alaydrus's book on Bidadari Bumi, right? She has an, an, an Indonesian book, Indonesian book on I don't know why it's Bidadari in English, but I think like the the, the like the, the the queens like you would say the queens are the angels on this on 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 earth, um, uh, that she writes about the Najiba uh, in that book. Right and mashallah, you know, and how Ustaz Najiba actually uh, told her about her story of how she, you know, she came on the path. You know, mashallah, that it was, and it really these are things whereby when you when you when you when you hear people who change their lives completely, you know, they, they flip their lives over. People who had, um, non-Muslim came into Islam, people who were sinning, you know, terrible sinners, and then they came into Islam. I mean, they 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 they, they made a full repentance, and then they came into. Uh, and and they began to to take the path to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It's really like a like a moment whereby the breeze of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala came to them, and then it hit them so hard that they just they had no choice right but to follow the breeze right to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. A person is encouraged and should actively pursue uh, to obtain such a state, such a hal, uh, you know, a situation. However, to hope and dream only without exposing oneself to such an environment or not standing at the door but just waiting is unwise and foolish right? for someone who, um, it, 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 someone who just you know, it hope, it's just wishful thinking. They keep going to places of sin. They keep going to to they keep, they keep doing whatever you know, uh, the opposite of what Allah Subhanahu. And what Allah has commanded them, then they hope, right? They have hope that they be brought to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That is being foolish. You should seek, right? Where if you want these breezes, you want this inspiration, then go to where these these these, these things are. This is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had said. We actually we pass all of this, eh? Mashallah. We actually here. 
Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said inna li rabbikum fi ayyami dahrikum nafahatin ala fata'arradu laha mashallah is what our scholars our teachers always point us to especially when ramadan comes around especially when ramadan comes around they would tell us you know the nafahat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the nafahat that is the word the nafahat which is basically the breezes I had the breezes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming down to you. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right. And so he says, indeed, inna li rabbikum. Indeed, for your Lord, it is for your Lord. Fi ayyami dahrikum. Right. In the days of your of your time, meaning every moment. Nafahat. Right. There are, nafahat literally means breezes right? or gifts you know, or breezes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to his creation. Right, so don't so 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 won't you expose yourself to them? You know, subhanAllah, that's how the Arabic goes. Right, won't right, won't you expose yourself expose yourself to them? You know, have yourself be in front of them. Go to these places, you know, subhanAllah. Uh, we are now approaching Rabbil Awal. MashaAllah, Rabbil Awal is when the Nafahad are in abundance because it is the, when the greatest of Allah subhanAllah's creation was born, subhanallah uh, alayhi wa sallam. In the days of of Rabbil Awal, right, for us to 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 bring ourselves and expose ourselves uh, to these breezes that that fill the lands with, with, the, with, the, with the with the lights of Rabbil Awal when it comes around, inshallah. Right. He, sallallahu alaihi, uh, he upon whom Allah subhanahu wa taala in His generosity bestows such a noble urge. There's another hat, eh? But the one that Allah gives this noble urge must know how precious it is. And Alhamdulillah, sitting here right now, listening to this, you have gotten the urge. <laughs> the urge has come to you. So if you say, I have never gotten this urge, then, but you're here right now. <laughs> you're here right now in this class. Right, that itself, in and of itself, is a proof that Allah put the urge in you already. Already. <laughs> it's already there. And so you're here. Subhanallah. Right, so don't say, no, where, where, I don't have the urge. It's my urge. <laughs> you're here, mashallah. You know, Alhamdulillah. And this is one of the, one of the, um, one of the one of the greatest things about going for for classes and reading books, right, is that you have this one hour between five thirty to to maybe one half hours, five thirty to seven o'clock. Right, many people could do many things in this in this time. Right? So on a Saturday evening, you could you could be doing a lot of things, right, with this time. That you know, Allahu Alam, how is gonna how is gonna be for you on the day of judgment, right? But if you put this in your in your you know, if you plug this in, you go out for a walk, you go and exercise a bit, right? and then you come back, right? listening, you know. Um, to the words of our scholars, you know, mashallah, that is a, that's a, that's this time when well spent. Alhamdulillah, and if, if it exposes you, and in a sense, when you, when, when you read this, when you read this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we say labaika ya Rasulullah, labaika ya Rasulullah. Uh, we, we we you know we, we we will do it ya Rasulullah. We hear we hear sami'ana wa ta'ana. We hear what you have said. We we have heard what you have said, and we are trying our best to expose ourselves right to this uh, nafahat of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And inshallah, you know. Has come to us, and inshallah, first our first step, you know, in giving it its right, is to understand how precious these urges are. How precious, and right? when you feel that you want to get close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, when you feel, you know, that how much time have I wasted? How much time have I, have I lost? You know, in my life, you know, it's really Alhamdulillah. At least at this point in time, you know, I am, uh, you know, that Allah has 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 placed this urge. Allah has triggered in me to do something about you know about my life you know, as I as I move towards my grave. Uh, he should know that it is one of the greatest graces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatest graces that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers on him. Most the greatest, you know, fadl from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he places, when he inspires in you uh, the, the the very strong desire to want to get close to him. And what is greater than that? To desire to want to fall in love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over and over and over again. To be always remembering him subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah puts that in your heart, if Allah puts that in your heart, so what, what, and that is like it's it's that like you have to understand how you know how undeserving we are of that and how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he has placed it like, in our hearts because we know what we've done in our lives. We know and all and and that it has come into our heart. You know, the 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 the, the, the shukr, the, the 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 gratitude in your heart it should be so strong, so great, 
Subhanallah. Right? And, 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 the, and the, you know how it was like, you know, uh, before this, right? before coming and tasting the light and, and experiencing the light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know how it was from before, you know, from be, the darkness is from before. And you don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. And there's a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whereby he said that for surely he has tasted the sweetness of Iman. You know, and you're going to mention three, three traits. For surely he has tasted the sweetness of Iman. The one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet are more beloved to him than anything else is the first sign. Second sign, the one who loves a person and he only loves him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second sign. And the third sign, right, the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, has, has the, one, the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved from, uh, from, from, from misguidance or the one who hates to go back uh, to misguidance after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved him from misguidance as how a person would hate to go back to the fire after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved him from the fire. Subhanallah, and and really, you know what? When we look at our lives, like what Allah has saved us from and pulled us out, and we hope, Ya Allah, that is that, that, that this continues, Ya Allah. We hope, Ya Allah, right, that that He increases us in in goodness as we move towards our our graves. Subhanahu wa taala, right, of Allah. Uh, so you should know that that is of the greatest greatest graces that Allah Subhanahu wa taala has showered on him. It is such that he will never know its real value. Alhamdulillah for Imam Al-Haddad Bring this, this to our attention Understand what you have is precious Nor will he be able to Nor will he be able to thank Allah Enough for it And on a day of judgment When we see how guidance manifests When we see how good uh, majlis Or good gatherings manifest When we see how our worship manifests When we see how the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala manifests with our worship And his forgiveness manifests With our worship of him, that we know our worship is, is is nothing for us to to, to be to be proud of. And when we see the mer- the, the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah and the generosity of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, uh, that He will show on that great day, right, we will never be able to thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala enough. Right now, already this the sweetness of 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 hidayah, the sweetness of of uh, of guidance already itself. If if you're feeling this. If you're feeling this, every raka'at that you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're feeling it, if you're feeling the, 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 the gratitude that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regardless of what you have done in your life, uh, that is against His commands, He allows you to come and to sujood, uh, to make your prostration in front of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He forgives, and He forgives, and He forgives. Who, how will you ever thank Him enough? On the day of judgment, you see the re- when you see the results, when you see that the, the reward, and may Allah make us of those who are happy and those who are successful on the day of judgment, not those who are regretful and not those who not, not, not those who are who are who are who are complaining and crying on the day of judgment, but of those who, Alhamdulillah, sitting on thrones facing each other and they are enjoying the fruits of paradise. That when you see all this on the day of judgment, you will like that Allah guided you, Allah gave you. Allah give you the ability and the strength and, and the companionship then after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you for all of that it's all him subhanahu wa ta'ala so let him thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the exalted and to his utmost for having especially singled him out and selected him from amongst his status and peers from amongst his people around him to receive this. How many a Muslim reaches the age of 80 years and more, yet neither has he uh, been bestowed with such yearning, nor his heart once was touched by this secret. And mashallah, mashallah. So this, this first chapter is the, it's, it's like it's the sweetness of this first chapter. You can read it over and over and over and over again. Just read it over and over again. He, Subhanallah, Imam, Imam Al- is <laughs> this is one of the, my most favorite chapters in I want, I want to say in this book in all of Imam Al- Hadad's books. This is this first chapter because it really it puts you in position you know, and, and it puts you really you know on your knees in front of your Lord Subhanahu wa Taala, being so grateful to Him and for giving you what He has given you Subhanahu wa Taala. A seeker should diligently strengthen, protect, and respond to this urge. Strengthen, highlight, eh? strengthen, protect, and respond. Three 
three levels of of rights right to give to this to this urge right on top of knowing how precious it is because after knowing how precious it is then now you're going to try and of course if you know something is precious that right, you will do whatever it takes right to keep it with you so you will strengthen it so that you will get so that you it will not die off you will protect it so nothing will will, will distort it and you will respond to it right, to, because the whole point of this urge is to push you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if not responding how are you how are you how are you benefiting from this urge it grows stronger when he remembers and makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he remembers and invokes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in zikr i say zikr it is it is you can, nobody can 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 be without zikr when he reflects al fikr right when when he thinks of Allah's creation and he thinks about the the, uh, the the bounties, the favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on all which Allah manifests right for him. And when he keeps the company of the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he protects it. So to, to grow it, right? To grow it, how do you grow it? Dhikr. And alhamdulillah, right, we just did our word, uh, we did before, uh, our bit after, uh, asar. Right? That is how we keep our, to our, to our zikr. Uh, you keep to your awrad, alhamdulillah for al-habib Umar, alhamdulillah for our scholars. They have written for us with every prayer time. <laughs> Throughout the day, and if any of you here, you're still, you're just setting off on a khulasa, you know, on the on the book of of zikr of Al Habib Umar, and you're just and you're just doing it after after every prayer, you will feel it's really filling up your time, you know, mashallah, it's it's really filling up your time, you know, mashallah, and alhamdulillah because it keeps you on zikr. You're, 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 you're thinking in your head, oh, I've not done the Zuhur Zikr, I have to do it now. And I've not done the Asar Zikr, I have to do it now. I've not done the Maghrib Zikr, I have to do it now. Throughout the day, your mind is just thinking, you know, that I have not done that Zikr and this Zikr. Oh, my Stawats for today, not done yet. I should do that. I should, you know, you're, 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 oh, I'm, not, I'm not doing enough Istighfar, do some more Istighfar today. I have to, I've not done the morning Istighfar, I should do it now. Uh, in a sense, you, your, whole, your whole day, your mind is going, you know, is, is being attached right, to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it's not, then inshallah it will be. <laughs> there is a secret in the khulasa. There is a secret in the khulasa of Al Habib Umar. You know, whereby it's all from, Rasul- from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that if you follow this khulasa, like for myself personally, it's, it, it changes your life, your entire your your whole your entire life, <laughs> your life. It will uh, it, it it does things to you. La. It does things to you. Right, just by but just by f- trying to follow, you know, uh, prayer time after prayer time, trying to read it, and especially if you if you're still struggling and you're still you know slow in it, then all the more the blessing right, from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right. Um. Naam. Right. So uh, and then fikr. Right. So sometimes you you don't want to read anything, you don't want to look at anything, but you just want to think. Right, about life and about Allah's creation, about the next world, about the Prophet wasallam, then do so. Right, because a moment of fikr, right, a moment of fikr, it is better than a thousand years of prayer without any fikr. Right, a moment of reflection, pondering, thinking. Imam al Haddad speaks about this in, enti- in one entire chapter in the Book of Assistance. Right, he speaks about the entire, the, the speaks about the the, the, the the greatness of just pondering. Right, thinking about life and from there this is one of the strongest um, uh, fortresses against the whispers of shaitan it is it is to, 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 to ponder but to ponder correctly right? to ponder about why you're here to ponder about the hereafter to ponder about your own uh, your own shortcomings to ponder about the gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of these things right, they form fortresses around the person right? and it, it brings a person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all, uh, on all which Allah manifests and when he keeps the company of the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? so with the company with the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they teach you zikr and fikr right? they, they they bring you to zikr they bring you to fikr you know mashallah there was once I was we were um, in Al Habib's house Habib Omar's house and you're waiting for Habib Nur to come his wife uh, to teach us the book of assistance right? and so she, you know mashallah you know, she, she has a packed schedule right? but she will come as the whole time uh, just, to, just to speak to us and teach us the book of assistance so there was also was sitting there and then there were there were some like old arab you know woman who was sitting there as well because habib's house is open and any really literally anyone can come in <laughs> anyone could come in and sit there in that room and and just you know uh, relax <laughs> in that room mashallah his house is always open anyone who wants food can come to his house at any time there's always food 
um, you know, available for anyone, you know, who comes to his house. So anyway, we were there, and and we were waiting for Allah Habab, uh, Habab uh, Nur, and this Arab woman, right, this began, it was Zuhur time, right? So we already began, we finished our, our ad, after we played Zuhur together, you know, some of the Westerners, we were all uh, English speakers. So, we played Zohar together. Then we did we did our rat after Zohar. We did some slawats, and then we stopped, right? Because you know we didn't know what else to do. So we sat we sat there. We were just you know uh, some of them were chatting, some of them were just you know um, doing their schoolwork, whatever. Right? So this Arab woman, right? They were there, right? and they saw us, and they were like, "Yalla, let's shoot Surah Yasin." Surah Yasin, okay, mashallah. They began Surah Yasin, right? and then after, and all from memory, yeah, <laughs> mashallah. They all memorize everything. Right? All from, so they were thinking, why, why Surah Yasin at Zohar time? Why are we doing Surah Yasin at Zohar time? There was no question about why we are doing Surah Yasin at Zohar time. It's just that you got free time, right? The okay, do Surah Yasin. So we did Surah Yasin, and then after Surah Yasin, they were like, okay, ya Allah, uh, Surah Waqi'ah, okay, Surah Waqi'ah. Then after Surah Waqi'ah, okay, Surah Surah um. Did it Surah Ar Rah Surah Rahman first Surah Rahman Did Surah Ar Rahman all from memory we all like we all like trying to pick up our phones oh, Surah Ar Rahman <laughs> I to recite it and then after that Surah Surah Waqi'ah okay, Surah Waqi'ah and then they continued now let's do Surah Duhan okay, Surah Duhan and we continued Surah Sajda okay, Surah Sajda and continue Surah Surah Muluk Surah Muluk they were just reciting Quran the entire time while waiting for Hawa Nur to come you know Subhanallah and after they finish they were like Subhanallah bihamdi Subhanallah bi mustafrullah Subhanallah it's just it is just non-stop the zikr, mashallah. Right, they don't they don't know how to sit there idle. They they don't they don't do it. They just don't do it. <laughs> Subhanallah. They don't they don't have their phones with them. They don't have phones anyway. Like most of them, they're poor. Right. So they just they just like they would just go on and on and on and on and on about the zikr. And then and then they would and, and this this woman, mashallah, they would turn to and they would say, you know, you are from Darul Zahra, right? Okay, one of you uh, talk, one of you talk, <laughs> one of you give a tazkira, right? give a give a reminder, one of you. I still remember that, that day, mashallah, right? They were just like like you give a reminder, you <laughs> subhanallah, right? So we just read from our books that we have in front of us, we just read something from there until Hawaba comes. You know, and then Hawa came and Hawa gave, uh, gave give the lesson, right? But they will, they will never like you will never find you know uh, a situation whereby they're all just idle, not doing anything, right? Subhanallah. So why when you keep the company of people of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you will not find them you know uh, gossiping that is so far from what from from, from their their lives. You will not find them uh, just 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 wasting time, right? Doing doing complete. Uh, uh, completely uh, useless activities. <laughs> you will not find that. It's like if you want, if you want to strengthen this this urge that's in you, then look at your company. Right? Look at what you're watching. Look at what you're listening to. Look at the people around you, and and have those people to be people of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He protects it. So that is strengthening. Eh, strengthening is here. So highlight, 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 highlight the whole thing. Okay, he protects it by staying away from the company of those veiled from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala by ignoring the whispers of the Shaytan. Right, and Shaytan's whispers is all he he, he is is he has all his sly whispers, and he always begins, you know, with um, you know, uh, by by making you stop your worship first. He will always try doing that first, and to pull you away and to do something else by convincing you that it's better that you would. Do something else than to do this act of worship. And he, he will say, you know, you're not, you're not doing, you know, your your tahajjud sincerely. Stop doing tahajjud for time. For he will say for the time being. He will say that. He will say just for the moment, just, just stop it. You're not, you're not sincere about it, right? Just stop it for a while. Right? Get your sincerity in order, then come back to it. Uh, it's all shaitan. <laughs> shaitan, this is his game. Right? He makes you, he convinces you. You know, you're not sincere about this. You're sincere about that. So stop it for a while until you get sincerity. No. Shaitan This is game If you feel you're not being sincere All the more you should do it no, all the more you should you should do it and work on yourself until you become sincere. And for until you die, you probably you will always feel you're not being sincere. Till you die. Till you die. You will always feel that you're lacking in your sincerity. And that is the heart of the believer. They never feel complacent about anything. No, subhanallah. Right? So to stay away from those who are veiled from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, stay away from place of sin, stay away from, from, from idle talk, stay away from all of these things, because this will this will will will, will, will chip away right, on the, it, it will it will cause blacknesses to form right, on the heart, like, and then it will call it, it will it will cause for this urge or this light or this breeze from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to diminish right, inside of you, and that is so so you protect it by by doing it in this way. 
And he responds to it when he hastens to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And you respond to it. When the moment this, this breezes come to you, right, the moment they, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, right, the, uh, the, the, the moment this, you, you feel the, the sweetness of these breezes to you, and then you look, at, around your, you look around yourself, and then you see things that you know um, will, will cause these breezes or these this urges to diminish. You look around yourself, you see things that you that you know you don't want to be that you, that you know that if the Prophet ﷺ was with you right now uh, you would not want these things to be here with you right now <laughs> right? so things that you're reading or you're watching or you're listening to or you're speaking about right? that if Rasulullah was there with you right now Right at that point in time, you're like, no, I, I probably put it off. Right, I'll probably hide it. You know, I probably uh, the moment you say that to yourself, you know, for you, 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 you can't, you can't fool you. You, know, you can't fool anyone when you, the moment you imagine the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was somewhere with you, uh, you can't, you can't, you, you can't argue your way. You just say, no, I'll probably off that, 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 that you know, that video, or I'll probably change the channel or I'll probably offer TV altogether <laughs> or I'll probably you know you, you probably say that right you probably say that or I'll probably change the subject that I'm talking about right now <laughs> I'll change it then be honest with yourself right? be honest with yourself right? why do we have these things around us so in responding to it right, you hasten right? you, you, you act on it then and then right? do not delay tauba. do not delay repentance do not because that is a, the, the urge to repent is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah puts the urge to repent in your heart, Allah wants to forgive. Allah wants to forgive you. So, so don't, don't ignore Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's giving you calls in your heart. Don't ignore Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because He's not ignoring you. Like he's giving you all these urges. So his watch is looking at you. He's watching you. Like we are the ones who's, 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 who's heedless of him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so then he hastens to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sincerely seeks his nearness. You want to be close to him and it should hurt you. It should hurt you. Whenever you feel far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should feel hurt. As how you feel hurt when someone beloved to you cuts you off. As how you feel hurt when someone so dear to you cuts you off. What more with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What more with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then we claim love for Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we don't wake up for a night prayer, or we don't do our prayers, or we don't uh, 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 speak the truth, or we watch things that bring us far away from Him. Where's the hurt? Right? Where's the pain? Right, that all these things are going to be blocks between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where's, where's the sincerity? Where's the plain? Where's, where's, where, where are you standing up to what you claim? That you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, we should feel every single time you feel that something, you had done something that this is you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a form of worship to actually feel the pain of it. It's a form of worship to feel the pain of it. Then you respond to it in tawbah, in repentance. And asking Allah to remove that veil and to bring you closer to Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. Subhanahu wa Taala. He neither waits, postpones, nor delays, because it's a matter of your beloved. Like, who, which which lover wants to be wants wants to delay meeting the beloved? Which lover does that? <laughs> if it's a true lover of, of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, not a moment do you want to waste. You know, when the, when the, when the azan is called, Arihna ya, ya Bilal. Bil azan ya Bilal, Rasulullah SAW used to say, "O oh Bilal, uh, give us rest, give us, give us in a uh, refreshment with the with the azan ya Bilal." Subhanallah. Said Aisha radiallahu anha, she would say that you know when Rasulullah was in the house, he was with us, you know, and he would do of the of the of of the household in you know, the chores, you know, with with his family. But when the azan is called, she said, "This is a hadith, mashallah." She said, "When the azan is called, it is as if he does not know us and we don't know him. Like he has now gone, gone into a realm whereby he's he's just it's just Allah, Allah, Allah. The entire time he is with Allah, yes, of course. Right? But when the azan is called, he's just com- consumed with now I have to meet my beloved. 
I have to go and, and, and speak to him. I have to go and stand in front of him. I have to bow and to prostrate in front of my beloved, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she said, it's as if he doesn't know us. <laughs> he will get up and he will go and prepare for the prayer and he will go and pray. Then, then, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his description, it is said that when he feels faza, or when he feels scared, when he feels you know, uh, disturbed, when he feels put, put up, he will run to the prayer and he will and he will perform the prayer and keep his sujood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever he feels distress. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we take his path. We take his actions. He's our leader, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hand by, uh, foot, step by step, inshallah, ya Rasulullah. Whenever the time arrived, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, whenever the time arrived, he will accomplish the act. And when the door is open for him to do good deeds, he should enter. Straight away, you should rush. You have any act, any any opportunity to do anything good, you run to it and you grab it. When called to perform, he should hurry right, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let him beware of letting one day pass after another. Right? Uh, uh, one day one day pass one day one day pass after the other. For this is the work of the devil. Do not let do not allow for the days to go by without you responding to this call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not postpone. Do not say you know, if someone's thinking that they should they should they should perform an act of, of goodness, for example, cover their aura, should thinking, you know, give me some time next year maybe. That like, no one promised you next year. No one promised you tomorrow. So if they say give me some time, I'll get my you know, Isha proper, I'll get my Maghrib proper. Who promised you the next Maghrib? Who promised you the next Aisha? No one promised you anything. You know, don't don't, don't postpone it. You know, don't postpone it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has placed on us what we can we can take. You can take it. Uh, it's a shaitan who's telling you that you're not ready. He's telling you you can't take it. He's telling you you're not there yet. Allah Allah making it wajib on you. That is himself telling you you can do it. Just by him making it wajib, <laughs> it's, it's compulsory. He's telling every human being can do this. Every human being can do this. And what's so difficult? It's not difficult. It's just our our minds being 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 chained, you know, by the devil trying to convince us otherwise. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us strength. Whenever we feel we feel weak, ask Allah. He's right there, Subhanahu wa Taala. Like why he he put things on us and he's there to help us, Subhanahu wa Taala. Ask him, Ya Allah. You know, I feel I feel a lot of weakness waking up for the for for subuh. I feel weakness waking up for the hajjud. I feel weakness opening up the Quran. I feel I, I I drag my feet whenever I want to read something of the Quran. I I read half a page and I feel like it's enough, it's enough. Or I reach one line and I don't I don't do it again. You know, you 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 know all these issues of yourself. <laughs> you say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, give me strength. Give me sweetness. Give me tasting. I remove this laziness that is in me, I, and and remove these whispers of the devil that makes me feel I am not I am not able to do what pleases Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Everyone is able because ability is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He gives ability. So when you say you're not able, you you rely, relying on who? You or him? Right, <laughs> Subhanallah. If you're relying on Him, you will never say you're not able, right? If you're relying on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If you rely on yourself, you're not able to do anything. And you know, Subhanallah. So place our reliance, our ability for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala alone. He must approach it and not weaken as he progresses. He must not make excuses. He hits everyone on the nail. Eh? Every like every word on the nail. <laughs> Mashallah. Don't make excuses. Do not weaken. Act on it. Beware of letting one day go by. Not even one day you're allowed. He said. Not even one day. <laughs> what more one week? What more one month? What more one year? To go by without improving yourself. Subhanallah. Imam al Hadrat says, one day but not allowed. <laughs> You're supposed to act on it. Act on it. No, Subhanallah. And of course, you know, uh, step by step, but but still act. I right? act on it. Don't make excuses such as saying that there is no time. No time what? <laughs> no time what? You know, Allah gave you time to worship Him. No time to do what you're created to do. Like, how can that be? And then a lot of time to do what you are not created to do, Subhanallah, and or that he's not good enough for a task, and again to say you're not good enough is you looking at yourself and you're not looking at your Creator, Subhanahu wa Taala. Right? None of us is good enough for anything. 
but Allah, Allah, that Allah is the what? Allah, Allah is the Allah is the possessor of all goodness. Allah is the creator of goodness. Subhanahu wa taala. Allah is a giver of goodness. We don't deserve. We don't deserve. And we're not good enough. Of course we're not. But Allah places us on it, and so we seek His bounty. We seek His mercy. We seek His forgiveness. We seek Him. Subhanahu wa taala. Never let shaitan deter you, or distract you, or discourage you. From taking a path to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala by making you think about yourself, the moment you think about yourself, in a sense of in a way of of thinking that you know I'm not good enough, you know, for this path, or you say that I'm not good enough, or you know it's not me, I'm not one of those people right, who take this path. The moment Shaitan makes you do that, right, then you know you have you 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 have you have lost. Don't let him don't let him do that to you. But focus on your goal. Focus on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It's not about you. He is the one who makes your feet move. Now He is the one who makes your tongue uh, utter the words of of istighfar and zikr. He is the one who gave you the ability to open the Quran and recite it. Now he is the one who make who places the, the the pain in your heart when you commit sin. He is the one. It's all Him Subhanahu Wa Taala. Since when was it you? It was never you. It was all Allah Subhanahu wa Taala all, all the way, and then He is the one who will, who will, who will. Insha Allah, we ask Allah, and our good, our good opinion of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He will forgive you. Insha Allah, then He is the one who will reward you after that. <laughs> Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, what are we? What are we waiting for? When Allah is, when Allah has has, has has spread His bounty in front of us, what are we? What are we waiting for? For ourselves to be to be to be worthy. No, Subhanallah. You wait. If you wait, you're gonna wait for a long time <laughs> till you're gonna be worthy. Do you think all the scholars of the past ever thought themselves worthy? Do you think any scholar of the past ever thought himself to be good enough? None of them. But they see Allah as all merciful, Allah as all gentle, Allah as all forgiving, Allah as all good, Allah the the, the owner of excellence, Allah the the generous Subhanahu wa Taala. And then when they see that, they run. They run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Rabi'a, may Allah have mercy on him, said, Go to Allah with your limbs and broken limbs. Do not wait for full health, mashallah. For that would be idleness. So, so that the words of the scholars, they know exactly what we're thinking. We're thinking, look at me. Look at how terrible I am. Like, like, like a beggar, you know, with hardly any clothes. But the king wants to give you clothes. Do you say, wait for me to to get dressed up first before I go to the king to ask for clothes? Do you say that, or do you run to the king with your tattered clothes and say, "Oh king, give me of what you have"? <laughs> what do you do? Right? You don't wait for some clothes to come by before you go to the king. You go to the king, and the king gives you the clothes. You go to Allah. You don't wait until you are you are you are you know you're all good and and and, and perfect and then you want to go to Allah to cure you. Then you're going him to cure you're going to him to cure you. Subhanallah, you go to him sick, you go to him ill, you go to him broken, you go to him unworthy. He is the one who will give Subhanahu wa Taala. So if your limbs and broken limbs do not wait for full health, for that will be idleness because full health only comes from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Ibn Abdullah noted in his Hikam. To say that until the person finds time, he can postpone the work is nothing but frivolousness of the self. When are you gonna find time? And when are you gonna find time? Don't postpone the work that 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 you are that that is placed on you for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Don't postpone it. You don't know. On the day of judgment, Allah is not gonna ask us about about anything He has not placed on our shoulders that we engage ourselves in. He's only gonna ask us about what he has placed on our shoulders that that is compulsory on us to do. This, those are the questions on the day of judgment, and all of us have an un, have an understanding of this because if you if you're going for an exam, and the, and the teacher tells you, okay, only chapters one to three is gonna come out for the exam. Will you go and study the entire book and spend all your time learning the whole book when the teacher said specifically chapter one to three only coming out for the exam? Even worse. If you skip chapter one to three and you begin studying four to six, right, without doing one to three, 
then you go for the exam you're gonna fail lah you will fail right why why because you spend your time doing things that are irrelevant right they are irrelevant things to the to, to, to the exam you're gonna answer for you're gonna, gonna you answer these questions so right now on this earth Allah has placed things on you that's compulsory and he tells you he's gonna ask you about these things on a day of judgment and then we engage ourselves in all kinds of things that's we won't be questioned about on the day of judgment and if we are questioned about them this is probably on a, on a, on a negative side may, may Allah help us wala hawla wala quwata illa billah alhamdulillah we finish the first chapter so inshallah this brings us to the second chapter on repentance right, so inshallah we will stop there for today Allahumma suri ala sayyidina Muhammad um, naam okay, uh, there are no questions Allahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al-fatiha anna Allah wa sallam manafi'an wa amalan khawazam wa musta'ani mudala al-huda wa yusur bi qawbin nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa ila arwahi ma'ani minam al-shaykh